Now that we've seen and understood how to solve quadratic equations, let's see if we can do something with higher order equations. That is equations with degree greater than 2. So you could have a cubic equation, for example, which would be written as ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Or a biquadratic equation, which means two quadratics, right? So degree 4, 2 plus 2. ax raised to 4 plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. That would be a biquadratic. And so on. You can write an equation in degree 5 and so on. All of these are higher order equations. Now typically, luckily, questions that you get don't involve solving these equations. You don't need to worry about how to solve an equation. Most equations, even if you get questions on equations like this kind, they'll either be relationship between the coefficients, which we've already seen, relationship between roots and coefficients. So a cubic equation, for example, how many roots will it have? 3, right? Degree is 3, 3 roots. Quadratic degree is 2, 2 roots. So it'll have 3 roots, alpha, beta, and gamma. Now, when you're talking about real roots, it will always be a maximum of three real roots because some of these roots can also be complex. We've seen what complex roots are, right? Some of these can also be complex. Can there be one complex root and two real roots? Not possible, right? We've also seen that complex roots always have to occur in pairs. So you'll either have zero complex roots or two complex roots. Three is not possible, one is not possible, right? They need to occur in pairs. So three is the number of roots. There could be either one real root and two complex or all three will be real roots. Those are the only possibilities. You know the relationship between the coefficients and the roots. If you take some of these three one at a time, alpha plus beta plus gamma, that is minus b by a, two at a time, c by a, three at a time, minus d by a. We've already seen this. Same thing applies for a biquadratic as well. Biquadratic has four roots, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Again, some of these could be complex. So you could have either two complex roots, four complex roots, or zero complex roots, right? Always need to occur in pairs. Same relationship will hold. Some of the roots taken one at a time will be minus b by a, two at a time will be c by a, three at a time will be minus d by a, four at a time will be e by a. That we've already seen. Now, when you're solving these questions, solving questions based on either a cubic or a biquadratic, the way you'll solve it is you'll reduce it to a quadratic equation. You are not expected to know to solve a cubic or a biquadratic. So in a cubic equation, typically either one root will be given to you or you'll need to find one root by trial and error. So typically this root will be either 0 or 1 or minus 1, something which is very easy to find just by trial and error. When we solve questions, that will be clear. Or sometimes one root will be given to you. It will be given to you that say 1 is a root of this cubic equation, find the other two roots. The moment you know one root, it is very easy to convert the cubic equation to a quadratic equation, right? Because see, if this is a cubic equation, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, and alpha, beta, gamma are the three roots, I can write this equation as x minus alpha into x minus beta into x minus gamma, correct? Now, if one root is given to me, if it's given that alpha is equal to 1, then I already know this bracket is x minus 1. If I take it to the other side, I need to just divide my cubic equation by x minus 1, right? Which will give me the second factor. x minus 1 is one factor, it will give me the second factor. Second factor is nothing but x minus beta into x minus gamma, which is a quadratic equation. So you'll very easily be able to solve it. Same case with biquadratics, right? Typically, two roots will be given, so you can reduce it to a quadratic equation. Now there's another nice thing we can do. There's a simple way to find out the number of real roots or the maximum number of real roots, which applies to all higher order equations, not just cubic and biquadratic equations. Basically, this rule was developed by Descartes. It's called Descartes' rule. You basically need to see the sign changes in an equation. Let's say you have this equation. Let's take a fifth order equation, x raised to 5 minus x raised to 4 plus 4x cubed plus 7x squared minus x plus 3. Now, if look at the sign changes, right? So the first x raised to 5, write it as plus x raised to 5. Then you have minus x raised to 4. Then you have plus 7x cubed, plus 4x squared, minus x, and plus 3. Now look at the sign changes. As you go across this, look at the sign changes. First, plus to minus, there is one sign change. Then minus to plus, there is another sign change. So we got two sign changes. Then there are no sign changes here. Now again, when you're going from x squared to x, you see a sign change, right? Plus to minus. And again, while going from x to the constant, you see a sign change, minus to plus. So there are four sign changes here, which tells you that this particular equation has a maximum of four positive real, four positive roots, 
right? Positive means they have to be real. There are no positives and negatives in complex numbers, right? So positive means it has to be real. What this tells you is that this equation has a maximum of four positive roots. Now it could have less than four also. This is just maximum, right? It has a maximum of four. Now it could have either four or two or zero. Why did I reduce in counts of two? Because we know that if it is not real, it has to be complex and complex roots have to occur in pairs. Right? So either there will be 2 complex or 4 complex or 0 complex. That's why you will reduce in pairs of 2. So it can have a maximum of 4 positive roots. It could even have 2, it could even have 0. But 3 and 1 is not possible. Right? Always reduce in counts of 2. Now, this was f of x. right? If I call this as f of x, I can try and find out f of minus x. f of minus x is nothing but in the same equation, everywhere that you see an x, replace it with a minus x. Correct. So we had plus x raised to 5. In place of x, if I put minus, it will become minus x raised to 5. Basically, all the odd powers will change signs. All the even powers will retain their signs. Correct. So it will become minus x raised to 5, minus x raised to 4, minus 7x cube. Right? Minus 7x cube, it's going to change its sign. x squared will not change its sign. So it will remain as plus 4x squared. Right? Because minus x, the whole squared is also going to be x squared. Plus x plus 3. So now if you observe the sign changes, now if you observe the sign changes, you will see there is only one sign change. Right? There is only one sign change, which is why this equation has a maximum of one negative root. f of minus x, the number of sign changes in f of minus x will tell you the number of negative roots. So this has a maximum of one negative root. Again, you can reduce it in multiples of 2. If you try to reduce 2, it will become a negative number. Not possible, right? That means you can be sure that this equation has exactly one negative root. Now, you can also check whether 0 is a root or not. 0 will be a root only if there is no constant, right? 0 is a root means this whole equation should be equal to 0. When you substitute x equal to 0. That is possible only if constant is not there. So, 0 is not a root here, right? So, this whole equation can have a maximum of 5 real roots, right? 4 positive, 1 negative. This equation can have a total of maximum of 5 real roots. So that's how you will find number of real roots. Total number of roots, you anyway know the remaining roots will be not real, which is nothing but complex. When solving an equation, you will basically use one value, one root which is already given to you and reduce it to a quadratic equation.